Have you ever wondered what Stranger Things and Jurassic Park would look like mashed together? Probably not, but that's why we did it for you. Keep watching to see how we pulled it off. We have just completed this huge project. Y'all have both done a ton of work on it. We're here at the finish line, but let's go right back to the beginning. Luke, you presented the concept to us. What made your mind start going? What if we mixed Jurassic Park and Stranger Things? So I think it was around the time we were all re-watching Stranger Things because the new season was coming out. I'm just seeing all this cool stuff in the mall. Shots that look like they're basically taken directly from Jurassic Park because you know the Duffers draw all this inspiration from Spielberg and I thought how cool would it be to see the T-Rex in the mall similar to the ending shot in Jurassic Park. A project like this you need some kind of structure or guidelines. So you just gotta be like here's the direction let's stick to it. We had to figure out how do we tell a story when and these are two drastically different stories. It has to be the characters in the world of Stranger Things, but then we bring the dinosaurs from Jurassic Park into their world. And then like, what's the deal with Eleven in this? Like, she, does she have superpowers? Because it's kind of like a weird mashup. I think the first thing that we decided on was removing Eleven because it just didn't work with her being a protagonist in this setting. Yeah, we just decided to really kind of follow Hopper and Dustin. It's kind of their story in a lot of ways. Nancy's probably our third character there because she's got this whole storyline of still trying to find Barb. Which is really interesting because it still fits in the framing of every season of Stranger Things, right? Because they have the kid storyline, teen storyline, and the adult. And I think we kind of take that DNA of Stranger Things and then put it into this story structure. Now, we can make a baby dinosaur. There was just such an overwhelming amount of shots that needed like a lot of VFX work. So we thought about reaching out to Kai and we wanted to see his thoughts on the trailer and see how he could contribute. I told you a little bit about the idea already. We've kind of talked it through and trying to figure out like what the story is. We're still figuring that out. Find the things that you need from Stranger Things to build your story. And then we can figure out how we can support that with visual effects. Watching the trailers helped. A lot of it was kind of luck of the draw. It's at like four times speed, just clicking around, trying to see if they would say something. Sometimes just focusing on parts where like the Demogorgon and stuff was more prevalent in the story, because I knew that there's potentially going to be some more vague terms that would be thrown around. What do you think the ratio of compositing versus CGI is in the final edit? Maybe 60-40. 60 being the compositing, 40 being the CG animations. The CG animations had to be composited as well, but there were shots that were just pure composites pulling from Jurassic Park, putting the dinosaurs in Stranger Things. The final shot that you did with T-Rex Roars in Starcourt Mall, that was completely composited. Well, actually, the sign, the Starcourt sign yeah. was a 3D object. So what I did was there was a shot of the dinosaur roaring in Jurassic World, I think. But there was a funny moment in that where in the shot from Fallen Kingdom, the T-Rex, when he roars, his head moves past a light. So you can see this backlight that kind of like moves from the top of his head to the bottom of his chin. And it didn't look right in the original composite of him in the mall. So what I did is I made a 3D model of the Star Court sign based on what they had in the show and then I swung it past the dinosaur as like its inspiration for the light uh, on his face and it kind of covers up that weird highlight on his head because the sign obscures it as it happens. I felt like that's the one shot I kind of had a little bit of input on because I helped make the star court font. Uh-huh. <laughs> you had found on CG Trader one morning a model that someone had made of a baby triceratops. All I needed was to be rigged and animated and then composited into this world. The hard part about doing that is taking Dart out because they've already done visual effects that have been finalized for the show. So now you're having to delete what they did and then fly in something else. Not only that, a lot of their shots are moving. There's things that obscure Dart. It comes down to a lot of clone stamping where you're pulling from different parts of the scene and kind of covering up where Dart is and then overlaying your animation and your dinosaur on top of that. And then some of those shots were completely fabricated from scratch too, like the shot of the trash can. There's no shot in Stranger Things when Dustin flips it over and he can see in the trash can and see dark. I'm excited that I got to do the kitchen scene because I feel like that's such an iconic shot from Jurassic Park. This was kind of a complicated scene. Emotion from both lips works really well. The fun part about this is that the 
camera movements are pretty similar. What I had to do is track the movement of this back wall, then track the movement of our raptor scene. This was in order to make sure that it stays in one place. So I was able to isolate the raptor there. There was a lot of stuff. I just kind of had to take piece by piece fit them together and hopefully with the rest of the footage it will feel just as put together and natural. Capturing the footage was probably the hardest part. I'm not sure how people normally do this but you're working with lower resolution footage that you can find on the internet. So we ended up buying Topaz Labs so that we could upscale the footage to 4K, but that was harder to do than you'd think. It's not just a magic button. We're running into this just nightmare situation with frame rates. I wish that we had, um, you know, gone to some sort of institution or something that taught us about, you know, when you make movies, how frame rates work. Yeah, like a film school or something. You have to fine tune every single shot for like, the grain, the amount of data that it's kind of compensating for. But what happens when you do that is if you have a wide shot and there's someone slightly obscured, it makes them look like aliens. I like your alien theory a lot better. Because it's just creating random like pixel data on what it thinks it's supposed to look like from the surrounding area. Some moments in the trailer, like the camera's moving past the kids playing D&D &D at the beginning, if you pause and you zoom in on the kids, they look crazy. But in the moment, in the shot, while it's moving, you can't tell. You have to see what it's doing with these kids' faces. Like... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> What happened to his eye? I mean, he's like, okay, but he's got like oh, a God. huge old eye right here. It's dude. like uh, Goonies, dude. Hey, you guys. Barbara is supposed to get dragged down the staircase. Um, that shot looked rough. <laughs> we were gonna have a dinosaur, you know, actually attacking her and like dragging her down. I had put a rough cut out of a dinosaur in there from one of the movies where it's jumping on a guy in the back of a moving car. And we were gonna also not only have a dinosaur in there, we we're gonna take Barb and put her on these like basement stairs. And that was gonna be like a plate that we film here in my house. We had to uh, do a good bit of work to make sure that it was gonna match up. Probably the biggest part is having someone to stand in. Well, we only had one person around who could do it and that was my wife. So, okay, Barb gets attacked. It's this shot, right? Uh, that's yeah. just a temporary placeholder, but mm -hmm. that's all we're gonna be doing. It's that's just it? You. Yeah, that's it. So we just need some 80s looking clothes. This is truly vintage, because it was my mom's. The easiest composite, I think, would almost be the head, because doing the hands are gonna be a little hard to fake whatever it's holding on to. Because we were gonna have her holding onto the door. We ended up going hands straight out, trying to hold onto the stairs, which worked so much better, and it made it such an easier composite. A great part was the arb didn't have like a backlight. You couldn't really tell where her hair stopped and the background began, so the rotoscope of her could be fairly rough. Thankfully, none of the little particles from Stranger Things were, were crossing her face. So there was nothing like that that we had to like clean up or anything. We tried our best to get Carrie's performance where it's timed the same as Barb's when she screams and then gets pulled in, into the pool. Carrie, how are you doing? Well, <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. It's fine. Now we are by no means stunt coordinators. We're using like a big sound board that's very slippery on the stairs, honestly. It worked out though. Hey man, safety first around here, you know? There is one section that's really early on in the edit of the trailer, and it's when the police officers are interrogating Nancy at lunch. We needed him to say, so you think there's a dinosaur on the loose in Hawkins? What he actually said was nothing close to that, but the way he moved his lips, that was kind of why I chose that wording. So I tried my best to like mimic his voice. Yeah, well, so you're saying you think there's a dinosaur on the loose? Yeah. In Hawkins. You don't, wouldn't believe how hard it is to search to see if someone's ever said the word dinosaur. I tried to do it myself. I couldn't do it. I don't sound like the guy. Uh, and then Ellis suggested a friend of ours. Danny. So you're saying you think there's a dinosaur on the loose in Hawkins. And he ended up sounding like almost just like the guy. It works great because I showed the rough cut to my roommate and girlfriend and they both asked me immediately, how did you pull that off? How did you get him to say those lines? Which that meant it was a success to me. So you're saying you think there's a dinosaur on the loose? One of my favorite lines is not said by anyone in the show. It's actually Chris Pratt's voice. 
but it works so well that most people won't be able to tell it's just pitched down. I lined it up where the end of the sentence says, depends on what kind of dinosaur they cooked up in that lab. And that little part where he says the word lab, I was able to line up with a hopper actually saying the word lab, and it looks just like he's saying, what kind of dinosaur they cooked up in that lab? Now, I'll tell you, one of the hardest shots that we did was when Barb is being chased into a house. The way we did it is Luke found a still from the show. Steve is climbing up into Nancy's bedroom. Freeze frame that. We took it in. We painted Steve out. The velociraptors blend in almost seamlessly to this background, and the only thing I needed from the shot was them. And then the door, it's very Frankenstein's, but it's so quick, I don't think you can tell. We have a lot of little Easter eggs. Probably most people won't even see it, but we put the little Reagan Bush 84 sign in the yard with the T-Rex. Or like in the town square, we took a shot from the Lost World where the T-Rex is walking down the street and we have a banner that's falling down that says, Welcome to Hawkins. The last piece of the puzzle is bringing in Philip Arthur Simmons. He's a composer. He's done all of our movies since our very first one. Very talented guy. I reached out to him and I was like, can you give us that hook from Jurassic Park? The part that everyone knows but can you do it in the style of Stranger Things? What he did was he took that iconic, famous Jurassic Park melody and melded it with the uh, Stranger Things synth vibes. What do you think with this project, personally for you both, was your biggest accomplishment? I mean, for me, it was being able to take fully CG dinosaurs and fly them into footage that already had effects or footage that's not intended to have these dinosaurs put into them and just finding ways to make that work. I got to really learn how to do visual effects. I'd been dipping my toes in for a long time. Finally, I just took the plunge. Also, Jurassic Park has been such a like monumental part of my life. So getting to like work in the world of Jurassic, that was a really cool experience for me. Well, Luke, Ellis, thank you all so much for really talking about the process. I'm super proud of what we've been able to accomplish. Thank you for watching this. Tell us what you thought of Jurassic things. Let us know in the comments, like, and subscribe for the next installment. See ya.